Hey guys, this is Brian and Raul with the Seat Shop. Today we're going to show you how to install new leather seat covers on an Acura TL. This is going to be the 05 through 08 model. Uh, we've got all the different factory colors for it, whether you need a top or bottom or console lid, whatever piece you need, we can get it for you, match it up with the original so you can just replace what's worn out. Um, we'll start running through some of the tools we need. This is pretty basic, uh, nothing really specially involved. Um, really high tech uh, marker, some kind of a pin grease pin. We use this because we can wipe it off the leather. Uh, we got a pry tool, set of hog ring pliers. This covered hog rings on, so all the leather face hog rings down to the foam. So you'll never need a set of hog ring pliers. Without these, it makes life pretty dang difficult to do an install with. So get you some hog ring pliers with it. Uh, regular uh, razor blade, some needle nose, a pair of snips, a couple flathead and Phillips head screwdrivers, uh, some scissors, and we got a uh, 14 millimeter socket um, impact on the impact here. And we got a screwdriver, just regular Phillips on our impact there to make life a little faster. Yep. Uh, we'll start stripping this down. Uh, we'll take you through the complete install, top, bottom, everything. We'll slide this out of the way. We'll put this here. We got a couple zip ties too. We may need a couple of those to hold some wires up here later on. We'll slide this over. Okay. First, we're going to pull all the plastic paneling off the side. Um, so we always pull the seat out of the truck or out of the vehicle as well. Um, I'm not sure what bolts it is on the floorboard here. I can't remember which, what size nuts they were from the floor, but undo the four bolts from the floor and there'll be a quick connect for the power underneath. Uh, undo that and then pull the seat out. So you can move the seat all the way back, hit the front two, move the seat all the way forward, hit the rear two. Right, it's really important to leave it plugged in because it looks like the back ones you won't be able to get to very yep. easily. And before you pull it out of the tr out of the vehicle, you want to move the seat back to the center port, center uh, position. That way, you can lean the seat back, undo the power. You don't want it all the way forward or back while you got on a workbench working on it because it's just going to flop all over the place. So you got it centered up here, pulled out. We're going to go ahead and pull the uh, control, all the power control panels yep. off. You and tilt this back first. Right. The way we started doing that is this front panel, which is pretty easy. You just got two Phillips here, and you got one Phillips on the side. There we go. Let's start with this while you're pulling those. On Brian's side there as well, this front panel connects to the side one with some tabs. So once um, you get the screws loose, just hang tight. It's still going to be connected. We'll, we'll pop this apart here once we got the three screws out of there. It's really important for that side panel. You kind of take it easy. Brian's got a small flat head there just because the last thing you're going to do is break all three tabs that are holding it together. Yes, yeah, so we'll look up underneath here. We get so there's, there's a tab here, here, and here. Uh, so we can push down on the tab with this little flathead and then try to kind of get some pressure to the outside. Have him kind of pull in there. See if I can get these off. There it goes. There it goes. There go. Perfect. Awesome. All right. We'll set this to the side. There you go. All right. Now the side panel. Oh, there's a screw. Is there a screw in there? Right. There's okay, a, gotcha. there's there's a there's Phillips a head right, right there. there. Hit that one. There we go. Okay, perfect. Now on this side panel, there's going to be a, there's a little catch right about here. It's going to have just a plastic claw that kind of just kind of dangles over a, uh, a metal bar in there. There's also a metal bar back here that this piece has two kind of tabs that pinch together that go push over and lock onto it. But they, for the most part, just pull off. You don't want to yank hard in the middle because you don't want to break that the plastic piece that, that goes over the bar. The back part snaps. You want to kind of start at the back and work your way forward. So once we've got these popped, then we can kind of lift it up and over. So we're just going to kind of pull. There, that popped there. And then we're going to go kind of up and out. There we go. Yep. Perfect. You're going to have two connections in the back. Sometimes these are kind of tricky to get to, but there'll be a little push, push tab that... Let's see, this one was yeah. in the front, or if I just gotta, mm. I gotta push that down right yeah. in the center. Okay. There we go. Okay, so here's that little claw on the front, on the middle, that hooks over a metal bar. Here's the little back piece that kind of pinches in, and there's a little ke catch right there, and then you got your front screw. So once the back's popped, just make sure you lift up and over off the side. We'll set that over. All right, perfect. Let's hit the side control. Let me panel. get the side one as well. This one, just grab up behind it, and it pops right out. Just all little plastic tabs yeah. on that piece. There's nothing crazy on that. So first, we're going to start with the bottom. We'll pull it off. So um, we're going to lean this back. We're going to undo some of the clips across the front. We'll kind of work our way back. 
It also is really easy to have the seat top off when you're doing it, you, mainly because there's only four bolts to pull it off and it gets it out of the way. And it makes it a whole lot easier getting the cover back through and running the wires and all that kind of stuff. So we'll tilt it back. We'll look at our power connections, look for any wires that are running up into the top so we can make those do the, make the disconnection there. We'll run our full bo four bolts out, drop this out of the way so we can deal with just the bottom. Let's tilt this back. Yep. All right. All right. Um, some people like to save the little zip ties from the factory. To be honest with you, I usually just cut them off. Uh, just because we end up using zip ties afterwards. Essentially, well, all they're doing is making sure those cables don't get caught up anywhere. A lot of them have a little push tab that come through with that has a zip tie that holds the wire. And usually, when you, if you try to pry them, pry them off, they usually break anyway. So we usually just go ahead and snip them and they come back with new zip ties at the end. So you'll see coming from the, on this back corner here, there's going to be two main wires that are feeding through the, up through the back cover. Those are, those are typically running up into your seat tops. So we'll make those disconnection there. We'll go ahead and, uh, let's see. Can't see any other thing we'll need to disconnect just right now. Let's go ahead and pop and cut, cut these hog rings off. Uh, some carpet. of them from the factory came hog ringed. Some of them are have a slit cut in them to where you're gonna have to pull on the carpet and flip it over this spring. Yeah, there'll just be a line and they just hook it and drape it over that to hold it on. Either way is fine. We've seen them both ways from factory. It just depends on who's doing it that day, I guess. There we go. Whenever you cut these hog rings, make sure you get the little charge and throw them to the side because the last thing you want to do is get a the seat around your workbench and yeah. cut a nick in your cover. So I've done that a bunch of times. All right. Oop, get that out of the way. Okay, that's clear. That's clear. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and unbolt the top and then we'll lay it back to the side. And like Brian stated earlier, what's holding the top is two 14 millimeter bolts on each side. Um, this is something that you could definitely do on your own. It's always easier if you have a little bit of help and have someone holding the top while you're unbolting these. And that way it doesn't fall anywhere. Okay. Let's set these bolts to the side. All right. We're going to give it a little rock back and then out. Okay. So now we're just going to feed these wires. There's a little hole in the back of this cover that the cables kind of slide through. Just kind of tucks them out of view and everything so you don't see them. There we go. Those three pieces out of the way. Yep. Slide this back All right here. Okay. Now we'll start taking the cover off the frame. At the very front, there's going to be a uh, plastic J clip that runs across here that just hooks onto some tabs in the front, a little flathead, and they hook in. So you get through here. That pops off. There's another one in here. That pop there. These might be a little bit difficult because of the way they hook from the factory. Um, just kind of like I said, take your time, take a little patience, don't get too frustrated with it. All right, see if there's any, uh, is there hog rings on that side or is it clips on your side over there? It's going to be a clip. That's gonna and clip. it's going to be a plastic clip that actually clips onto a bar that runs across. So we're just going to reach up in there, press down on the seat and pull off. And you can see right there the bar where it usually clips yeah, on. So that hooks on that bar there. This side's got a couple hog rings we'll snip off. I believe, yeah, there should be one here. That one. Yeah, one's a back two. Okay. This is the side. There it is. And there's going right to be there. two clips underneath. Right okay. And you can tilt the seat up, and it's going to be these two right here. Okay, yeah, little wings that just are going to the yeah. spring work there. And okay. with that done, we'll go ahead and set the seat down and it should be able Perfect. to lift it off. So now all the covers are going to be hooked onto the foam with either Velcro or hog rings. This one happens to be attached with hog rings for the most part. So we're going to flip, just start to flip your cover inside out with it still on the foam. Don't just yank it up because you don't want to rip all the anchor points out. Um, so we'll just kind of turn this inside out here and kind of look and assess and see what's holding this on. This looks like it's got hog rings down the side. And it's got hog rings. So we're going to take some snips. We're just going to run down the sides here and, and cut all these hog rings out. These hog rings are going to be sitting. They can fly out pretty quick. So I usually close my eyes when I snip it. Uh, we found one stuck about a quarter inch into our, one of our lights the other day, about 20 feet away from where we were filming. So 
they fly out sometimes with engines, so so you don't want to get one of those in the eye. We'll turn that inside. Uh, there we go. We'll get all the old shards out here that we snipped out. out. And it's going to have some needle nose pliers dig on there, so that some of the ones that are left down in the foam, we want to pull those pieces out. You don't want to leave those in the in the cover before you put the new one on. If you do happen to rip one of the uh, connection points out of the foam, there's just some, there's like a a wire that's buried into the foam cushion uh, that just gives you an anchor point to, for it to grab onto. If one of them happens to be, you know, the foam's beat up and deteriorated and that wire's coming up, you can glue it back down. You get a spray adhesive and just kind of load it up in there and, and bury that wire back down there. Let, make sure it sets up real well before you put the new cover back on it, just so it's got something to grab onto and the glue's not too wet and then just pull apart. But if you do happen to rip it off, it's not in the world, just, you can glue those points right back down. And they make it very clear on where your auger rings go. There'll be a little, you know, about a half inch, three quarter inch spot that's open in the foam that you can see that metal bar inside the uh, inside the foam. So it's not just a complete guessing game. You got all, the, all your arms out of there? Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right, so then we'll go across the center now. Okay, there's auger rings here too. Stip these guys out. Oh, there we Side. Okay, pull back. White pad here is going to be your seat heater. That's it. You always kind of take a look at that, make sure it's in good shape, no burn marks, or it's not turning a nice golden brown for any reason. That would be the time to replace them when you get it out. But I don't think the accuracy has too many problems with the heaters. At least that I know about yet. Let's see if I can get this one out, please. The last one. I'm just time consuming to get a hold of out of there. Sometimes you can snip them and they still hold on. You gotta cut it to three or four pieces before it actually finally lets go. There it goes. Get out. Carrying off the bar. Yep. Go back to the side. Dig the rest of our little pieces out of the Oh, that's good. That's clear. Yep. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Cool. These foam cushions are, the factory design is pretty good. Uh, the outer bolsters are pretty firm. Uh, the firmer a foam is, the longer it lasts, longer it'll hold up. Uh, but you can get too firm and it's not comfortable. It's like sitting on a concrete slab. No good. But uh, if if everything's in pretty good shape, usually we'll steam the foam out. If you got a, just a home steamer, garment steamer, steam will really re react with the foam. It'll help it swell back up, back to its original shape. Uh, let it dry really good before you put the new cover back on it. But uh, typically these, these acres came with a pretty good foam from the factory. Um, if it is beat up real bad and the left side, mainly the left edge from getting in and out and maybe the left on the top from this bolster here from sliding down, if it's really soft or in or you got chunks missing, you want to layer in some new foam, possibly replace the foam. Uh, I'm sure we'll be working on making our Dura foam line for, uh, for, the, for, the, for the TL as well. Um, we'll see when we get those released, but uh, if, in the meantime, if it is in bad shape, you need to layer some new foam in there. Steam, steam it out first, layer some new foam to build it back up. If it's really shot, you may want to talk with a bolster shop, a local shop, see if they can rebuild some of the some of the, the foam for you. So you got a good foam base to put the new cover on. If you put the new cover on a foam that's shot, it's not going to hold up real well. So um, really address the foam when you, especially you get here, you can really see what's going on with it, see how bad it is and just kind of see what you need to do from there. So now the bottom's off. We'll go ahead and set it to the side and we'll start stripping the top off. The bottom's pretty straightforward. The top's got a little more, a little more, a little more to it, a little more attitude to it. So we'll dig into it. So we'll slide this over. First, we're gonna pull the headrest off. We'll just slide this up, hit the button, pull that to the side. We'll get these, uh, these tubes here. We'll pull these out here in a second once we get this back panel off. There's a little release on the inside. We'll pinch and these things will pop up. Don't try to pry them straight up because you'll break the, uh, we'll push tab the connection tabs in inside and you want them to stay there. So when you adjust it up and down, the whole tube doesn't slide. So let's go ahead and get the back panel off. Guys, it's really important and I've read and tried to figure out the way. Apparently there is no good way of actually removing this back panel without either breaking the panel itself or the plastic push-ins that are inside of it. So there's two tabs that are pushing here and here. 
uh, they go into the into the frame. Uh, they hook onto a little notch on the inside of this panel, and then push into the little tabs that push into the frame. So when you're separating, a lot of times that tab will break. Sometimes the plastic on the inside of the of the cover of the actual back panel will break as well. But we got a little work around. We'll show you at the end if they do break. When we pull this one off, both of them broke. Um, so we'll show you the little work around here in a second too. That pulls off. So this will just pry up, and then there's uh, it hangs from the top. So there's two big pieces that hang from the top on a metal bar. This will pull up and this kind of work forward. There we go. Flip that over. It'll show the thing here. So here's the two top pieces that drape through these metal bars. You got a little push connection here and here that wrap around a, this metal bar here and there. And then these two tabs here are what push in to here. So this little piece is what we made to go on. So those will push into those tabs there. So we'll set this piece to the side, start pulling the cover off. This one you need some flathead and, and also some uh, snips. You'll start cutting the snips. I'll pull some of these clips off. On these, you don't have to actually snip them all. You can kind of grab it and kind of twist, and it'll it'll bend the ring open. Now you don't have as many metal shards all the way around. Just kind of pinch. Don't break it all the way through, and just kind of roll it off. Okay, like that. All right, perfect. And this one. This has the uh, airbag, so uh, this is the driver's seat, so it's facing the door. Um, we'll show how to uh, undo the clips here for that as well. Wait a second, there's a couple more straps here. These hoggering up. Right over. That's clear. Okay, now. These little tabs, let's undo these. Okay, awesome. Now, for the airbag, they've got two metal brackets that are right here. There's a white bracket and black bracket. The white one's on going to be on top and on the inside, and the black one's on the outside, uh, on the inside towards the center here, and on the outside of the, uh, the top and the bottom of the white frame there, or the white bracket. So you can pinch this white one in because they have the hook they kind of interlock so that they hold together there so let's pull that one there and let's pull this one in like that and then we'll see if we can we need to pry them over to the top okay so that comes off there yeah, this one should come out always kind of be careful the frames are sharp so the last thing we do is cut your finger yeah the inside edge of this railing all in there here is pretty sharp let's Try that so we don't get cut. Okay, there's one. And two. Okay. So now there's a there's a uh, airbag fabric that's on the inside. It's not actually part of the airbag. It's part of the deployment system, so it helps directionally deploy the bag towards the front seam that's got a special thread on it so that the airbag rips open. So um, what we'll do is we'll want to feed this white uh, the metal wire through this, uh, through this little hole, and it'll come out of this little bag, this this little loop piece here. Feed that out. There we go. Okay, so we'll leave that in for just now. When we'll get the cover off the front off, then we can pull that one over. So let's flip this over. Okay, so just like the bottom, we're going to start kind of pulling the Cover up, let's feed these wires through. There. There. And there. Okay, so just cover. There we go. We don't have to go all the we'll start snipping the bottom, then we'll get to that. Because okay. the bottom so the top goes around the back and it's got the back panel. It's going to be hard to undo all that to pull this off first. We'll start snipping the, uh, the hog rings and kind of work our way up. Um, so it gives us a little more slack. So there's these hog ring all the way up and vertically as well. So we'll start kind of snipping from the bottom up. There we go. Put that one there. Okay. 
first horizontal here. Pieces to the side. Okay. All right. We're getting. All right. Let's get the airbag piece off here. Now let's flip up here. And turn this around. So we got. So the black part of the airbag piece is still through here. So it comes around the front of the frame, and it hooks on to a, a little loop in the in the airbag as well. So we're gonna kind of see if we can push this out there we go towards the side and then we'll look over here to the cover there we go so this will pull all the way through okay yeah you, you can pull it right there yep. pull through there it is perfect now we'll put it back in we'll pull the airbag off because it's a whole lot easier to to feed some stuff through it's a little bit easier to do that Pull that through. There we go. Okay, so that's free. Now we'll continue with our hog rings. There we go. Still hooked on in there. The middle one? Yeah, right there. Here it comes. Okay, so now. Less. Okay. All right. Is there more? Yeah, there's going to be a dog tail up there, I believe. Okay, yeah, the very, very top. Let's take another ring up top here. Come out of there. Okay, right to the side. Okay, now we're to the very top. Yeah, let's yeah, get the rest of those out. So now we're going to be ready to remove our header pole posts. Yeah. I still got a bunch more over here. Can I move them over that way? Okay. Now, let's flip it over to the back. All right. So... Oh, there's another ring there. Let's get that off and I'll show the. There we go. Okay, perfect. So here's our two stumps for the uh, headrest. So all you got to do is just really pinch there and there on it and then just pull up. You get them. There it goes. Okay. And I'll pinch this side. Okay. There we go. Perfect. All right. So now. One thing to notice, this button is always going to be facing on the outside. Yeah, that faces the door, faces the driver door. All right. So then we got Velcro across the front. So that's it. So we got a little Velcro strip there. So we'll set this to the side. Okay. And ready to put the new covers on. 
That's it. Same thing with the foam. Look at your top. Usually your wear point on a top on a TL is going to be right in here from sliding down in it and come down and you slide down this, this, this heavy bolster here. Like I said earlier, the foam on this is pretty dense, pretty firm, holds up pretty well. But if, it, if it's beat down, you need, may need to layer some half inch foam or something to kind of build the side panel back up. But good opportunity to kind of look at it and address any problems when we got the cover off. So uh, we'll get ready to grab the new covers, reskin this, put it all back together. All right, I'm going to grab the top cover and we'll start hogging it onto the foam here. So to take the cover, I got it flipped inside out like this. And we're going to hook all the hog rings onto the face first, on the front face of it first, and then we'll, we'll wrap it around the back side of the frame. So we'll line this up. I'll do the horizontal ones first. So turn it like this and fold it across my first seam here. So here's where you, you can really line it up. You can see the seam lines here where it's sewn together and then here's your hog ring strip that the hog ring is going to hook onto. You want to line up your first hog ring across this horizontal here. Make sure we're straight. You can see, kind of see how even you are from the end of the foam to where the seam is on that side and the same thing over here. Make sure you're not too far left or right. Make sure you're centered pretty well. That's looking pretty good right there. Okay, grab a hog ring and the pliers. And when I'm hooking this on, you want to hook the, uh, put the hog ring in the pliers and then hook it around the plastic rim here on the, on the hog ring bar. Hook it there so that way you can, when you're pushing down into the foam, it, uh, it's taking the bar down there with you. Instead of trying to put it all down there and line it up and crimp it on, it's a little easier to hook here and down than crimp. There we go. And it'll work our way around. There's a, quite a few hog rings on this cover. So if you don't have a set of hog ring pliers, we've got them available on the site. They're cheap, and it's worth your sanity to have a set of hog pliers that's doing this with needle nose pliers. is the last thing in the world you want to do. There we go. Okay. All right. Set that there. Yeah. Looks pretty good Turn on this it. side. We'll do the other horizontal. Notice he's starting from the very bottom and heading his way up just because the bottom's going to be a lot wider. It's going to be a lot more... Uh, it's going to be a lot easier to line up and get it to line up correctly. That way you don't have to sit there and cut hog rings and realign everything once you're done. Fell asleep. Now, before we do our long vertical ones, we can look, flip the cover up here, and you can just double check that your seam line that's running horizontal, which is right here, you can see, just make sure it's lined up right dead in the center of the, of the gap there, because you can pull, you know, up or back a little bit. So just make sure everything really looks good. Those look like they're lined up right in the center, they look fine. So we'll start working our way down the sides here. You can see little spots in the in the foam where the hog ring goes, so you don't have to just guess where it goes. You'll see there's a little, oh, uh, that little three quarter inch gap or so. And you'll see the little wire, I was, like I was talking about earlier. Uh, you'll see that, so you know where to each each ring needs to go on. It takes the guesswork out of it. No, those are the, the bad ones. Remember, those we remember. Are the best. No, th we removed the. Yeah, uh, the best ones you change the handles off of them. Yeah. That's my favorite pair. This is my favorite pair. What? Really? I think so. Oh, man. No, I don't think so, man. 
Those aren't very good. Oh, no. This, oh, we yeah, did, okay. totally. We did all right. We, did, we robbed yeah. all the handles off of it. Yep. I'm telling you, man, we need to make us some King Ranch handles for these Ooh, and identify we'll them. Some, some crazy handles someday. Yeah. Some uh, red Aberdeen handles. <laughs> I uh, greatly prefer Velcro to hog rings, but whatever. Yeah. It's uh, whatever the manufacturer came out with, yep. we're stuck with. <laughs> so, all right, now that those are on, we're going to go and wrap the cover around the foam. Um, so, the airbag. yeah, the airbags flaps here. We we'll kind of line it up a little bit here. We'll stick your hand underneath the cover on the double seam. You can kind of push it out and make sure it's kind of lined up all the way flat down the edge. I'll start on the top corner here, fingers pushing out on that seam there, and always keep contact, constant contact with the cover with your hand on the in inside hand, don't let it go, and then you can come in the inside here with the other hand and, and really roll it tight, there we go, I'll work all the way down the cover there, okay, and we'll do the same thing over here, stick my hand up to the seam, there, and then roll over. We can set this Velcro here as well. Yep. Something, something's inside. Oh, one of the clips. Some of those full flaps. Yeah. Stuck down in there. There we go. Okay, that's cleared out. All right. Yeah. Get this all clipped, then we'll come up and start to smooth those out some. On our workbench. Right there. The airbag. Some more. You want to remove the airbag to. Uh, you want to do that? Yeah, let's pull this. Make it a little bit easier. Yeah. So the airbag's just got one 10 millimeter uh, nut on the inside. It's a little bit easier having the, the airbag, actual physical airbag, out of the seat to run the straps through to hook our uh, metal hooks back on. So we'll go ahead and pull that off real quick. Pull the airbag out now that it's unbolted. We'll just lean it to the side here. Yeah, make sure you don't put too much pressure or tension here on these wires. So we got two straps that are in here. I'm going to flip this up so you can kind of see a little better as we feed these wires back into them. So we have the longer strap, and then we also have this smaller short strap here. The short strap is what's going to take the black uh, clip here. So with the facing like this, we're going to feed the bottom one through the bottom of the loop right here. Okay, getting there. All right, so once we get it fed through, it look like that there, okay? Now these two prongs need to go th underneath this frame here. So we'll back this back here, stick those through, feed them underneath the frame. So that's gonna be there. So these will eventually, we'll hook on there. We'll hook it there so it doesn't pull out, and then we'll go ahead and thread the uh, white one on too. No. All right, with this fed through the strap, it's going to look like this here. This is going to feed through in between, over the top of the airbag and through the foam. There we go. And we'll lay this down. And this part's kind of funky where it hooks into here. It's going to, the white clips are going to be on the inside of the black here. And then this little prong here has got to come in and set on top of that right there. So we're going to hook these over. And then there was a 
if we go to the end, there we go. Pinch the white one in. So yeah, there we go. So if you pinch the white in, you can you can uh, inside and then let go of the tension, and it'll pop on top of the black right there. So same thing there. Okay, awesome. So that's all secure. Press this down. Yep. Yeah, that's all perfect. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Okay, so now we'll start securing the cover on. Go back to the hog rings again. I'll use the, the I'll use the terrible set. But the spring didn't work on. There's a little black strap. Some have them. We've seen some models that had it, some that don't. I don't really know what they do. I don't, can't tell what real f purpose they they uh, they perform. But we're gonna just wrap it and clip it onto the frame there. This one here, same as. Same thing, hook it onto the frame. I believe this one's going to be a five and six. We're going to have these, and then seven and eight are not. They got rid of them? Okay. There we go. Okay, we're going to have a hog ring again. Those two clips there. Yeah. All right, that's it. I guess we'll bring the bottom up and we'll start going through yep. joining those pieces together. Uh, let me see. Actually, we need oh, we need to hook those two hog rings yeah, there, and then we need to kind of set the front and make sure it's in good shape. Oh yeah, pull this little clip off. All right, this will hook on to hook on the inside of these wires. Right go to here. There's not going to be a crazy amount of tension on these. Yeah. These don't serve a massive purpose either, but they're on there for the factory, so we're going to stick them back on. Oh, that didn't work. Let's grab that one. That's for saying it didn't have a purpose. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Cool. Sweet. Put that tab back on. All right, we'll flip this back over. All right, so I'm going to help get rid of some of these wrinkles here. You can kind of smooth out the sides. You can always start from the center seam, this seam here, and I'll roll with my thumbs. I'll push down and out, and then I can pull. When I'm rolling over here, I can grab the foam, and I'm pulling the foam back towards me while keeping the leather out. So it helps the seam really line up on the outer bolster to make sure it's really right on your edge, and it'll help smooth some of that out. Same with it here. A lot of this stuff, will, the rest of the wrinkles and stuff will get out with time with heat and the vehicle, with the trucks closed up in the summer, windows up and everything is hot. It'll start to, the leather will start to shrink down and really form onto the leather real well. But we want to make sure that the seams are lined up. You can see how these seams are a little bit towards the center of the seat. Once we kind of roll it out, we'll get them right on that, on that edge border there. All right, let's put this aside and we'll get the uh, bottom up. Bottom's pretty straightforward. A whole lot less involved than the uh, top. Still hog rings on, so you still got quite a bit of hog rings. We'll do the same kind of process. We'll flip it here. With the cover turned inside out, I'm going to fold it in half on that seam. Make sure we're lined up in the center. That looks about right. Okay. And hog ring it on. <laughs> Give him my favorite pair of eggs. Akimbo, man. There we go. Last way there. Let's go and make sure the scope's looking pretty good. Which is right. Yeah, you can see if it's turned. Well, my one ring came off. 
Didn't hook all the way. Pull this one off. Also, make sure you're not turn kick one way or the other whenever you're pulling back to do your other one because I think there's a rear. Yeah, there's a rear one back here. Okay. That looks good. Yeah. Okay. Hot ring in here. Missed it. Okay. Sir. Okay. All right. So this. Horizontals are done. Now we're gonna look at these. Make sure everything looks good. Not Lines. Side. Yeah, it's looking pretty good there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, pretty good. One small detail that I've noticed. Is start, I watched you do it, and I started doing it a lot more. Is before you start clipping them in is to actually push in the whole hog ring bar instead of just pushing in one corner and working your way down. Yeah, sometimes it can get twisted. So once you know you're good, I can kind of line it and turn it down, especially some that have a deep grooves. To get it down in, it helps to flip it around and get it down in there. Doing this without a set of hog ring pliers it's, would know. be a real whip. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's not fun. It's not fun with hog ring pliers. You definitely don't want to do it without. Okay. go all right last one here <laughs> spoke too soon yeah. spoke too soon that's one thing My that we, can, we get a lot of phone calls and a lot of people ask whether it's difficult or not it's really tough to say difficulty wise just because you're brian's gonna, it's going to be a lot easier for brian than it is for me brian's been doing it forever um best thing to do is watch these videos through and throughout without a skipping and not to do it when you're in a rush so definitely don't do it right before a trip or before you have to go anywhere, I would take at least a Saturday to do one seat, just so you know you can get it done. Yeah, it's not that bit, and it's just, it just takes a little while, just take your time doing it. All right, yep, we're hooked there, okay. All right, let's see. Flip it here, and we'll roll the cover over. Okay, we got the cover hog ring on, now we're gonna roll it over the corners here. Um, I'll start, you just start in the front corner here, put my fingers on the on the double seam on the inside and roll over to there. Pull this seat belt out of the way. There's that. Same thing over here. It's real important not to make lose contact with the cover with your hand that's that's leading here. So when it's rolling over, keep contact on it at all times to roll over. Otherwise you're gonna get a whole lot more rippling and stuff throughout the cover. There we go. So this one's pretty, the bottom's a little easier to get on the top, so that's there. And these are going to feed through the back. Okay. 
I was flipping around here anyway. Start looking at all the clips underneath. These right here run underneath the foam. So you're just going to tuck them. There's going to be a little gap right there. What I do is it's going to be kind of tough to get them all the way through. I get them halfway down there and then pull them from the bottom. Okay. I'll hit this yeah. one there. Okay, I see the gap. And then that way when we flip the seat over, we can get just reach up in there and grab them. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Let's make sure we get it. Here we go. Lift that up and I'll wipe underneath. There may be something underneath there. Is it? It might be. Lift it up. Let's see. Now yeah, we're good. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So now here's the clips we just passed through there, and these are just gonna hook onto your springs. This needs to go into this one. And those don't have to be ridiculously tight. Fucking that one will slide off. This should be good. There we go. All right, let's hit the side clips. You got hog rings on your side. This side here has just got a long J clip. It's on this metal bar, so we'll pull it up over the edge here. Roll it on. I'll probably get this one and flip it back over. There we go. The front's going to have three little connections, so the hook's there, there, and there. <coughs> Make sure your wires are pulled through uh, for your that are run to the front heater. There's these two pieces. So make sure they're not tucked up underneath there, so you don't have to pull it back apart. Go chasing your wires. Okay, you get the thing. <coughs> there are some wires that are going to run right here to this motor. You just got to make sure you don't actually attach one of those on accident with a hog ring. Yep. yep. Okay. Perfect. With that hooked on, we'll kind of smooth, smooth the top, smooth this out, the top surface area. <coughs> Roll the cover out. Pull back on the foam. And get that seam line to really hold, hug the edge of the foam. There. We're not gonna, we're not gonna hook this flap just yet, just because we're gonna run our wires through here. Yeah, because there's some cables from the top that are gonna go through there. It's gonna be a whole lot easier with that loose. Uh, we'll get to that next. There's that. Alright, bottom's good. Now we'll get to connecting the top back on. Right there. Cool. All right. So now all we got to do is make the cuts for the headrest, uh, some cuts in the back for the panel. And Run our bolts to the side to, for the top back on, feed the wires through. Should be good to go. All right, now that we've got the covers on, we're going to go ahead and flip the seat top over, and we're going to go ahead and put the back trim panel on. There's some a couple funky things on the back of this piece. There, when you pull the uh, panel off, it's pretty hard to get to some of the connections and some of the tabs break off. Uh, sometimes it just the, the little Christmas tree tab will break. Sometimes the actual plastic trim, plastic part of the frame right here, you can see this piece is, is broken off. You can see on this side, there's a little bit more of the plastic here. Well, that wouldn't really continue all the way around. It gives you more of a rim to go on to. So we've come up with a little kind of work around in case those break off. Uh, we've kind of dug around looking if there's any other way to pull this thing off. And looks like everything we found online, every forum is talking about, you know, those things just usually breaking break the tabs. Off. So this is a little work around. Uh, this may not be our final solution, but this is what uh, we're going to come up with now. Um, if you break yours, we can we can get you one of these rigged up for it to put on. So there's three screws across the back that Raul just pulled off. Uh, we're going to lay this piece of plastic here, basically, that's got a couple extra Christmas tree tabs in the back that are going to push into the, some holes in the frame here. So we're going to just screw this into place. 
You don't want to torque them down too hard because uh, all the threads in there are plastic. So if you get them too hot, you know, torque it down too much, it's going to strip the, the plastic thread out. So if your drill has settings, go ahead and set it to the lowest. If not, just kind of ease it in there or even do it by hand. Perfect. So there's also going to be a couple slits here. So this little, this piece here, this tab here, and this tab here are going to come through the frame here and over here. So we're going to cut a little slit in there for those to come through. And then these two bar, these two pieces here are going to hook onto this bar. And it hooks over the top. The top's going to drape down, over, pull down. Then the bottom will swing in and push in. These two tabs will connect down here. Which these will also make the cutouts for the holes. We're going to hold there. here, and those little other guide rails will go through down through there. So let's kind of get an idea to see if our line's on. So there's here's the gap we're going for right here that this bar, that piece of plastic is going to go through. So yeah, that line, this little circle is pretty, pretty good there. Just make you a little vertical slit. Okay, we're looking right about there. Same thing over here. And this one's going to be covered up by the, the panel itself, so if you do make it a little big, it's not yeah, that big of a deal. Yeah, you got room for air because this thing curves around the side, yeah. so it kind of covers it up. Now we need to make some holes for little tabs to come through. So it's these outer two big holes. So this hole here and this hole here, what those tabs going to go to. So you can feel that. Let's go ahead and mark. Let's get the white one. So the Right over there. there we go. Yeah. Make you a little mark. You can feel that that clip. You can feel the hole's big enough. You can feel it with your fingertip through there. So you can get that clip on. Okay, right about there. This one I'm gonna make with some scissors. Let's see, you got the Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna unclip this. And I'm just going to fold it right where that mark was and make a little snip. There we go. And this is all going to be covered up, so you can make a little decent sized hole. It doesn't have to be perfectly round or anything like that as long as the push tab can get to the frame. Exactly. And the last thing you want to do is have a little bit of carpet flap covering the hole when you're trying to put that thing on. It would be kind of irritating. So cut you a little bit because it's all going to be covered up. Okay. All right, so now that we have our those cut out, we should be able to install our top panel. Let's see, is that hole pretty clear? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, clear. Yeah, that'd be all right. Okay. So these, we're going to start with hooking these top two hooks. And they're going to hook into these metal rings right there. So let's line that sucker up there. Okay. Then let's see if those are all. Looks like they need to come down some still. Yeah, there he goes. There we go. Let's see, yeah, holes lined up there. Can we get over there? Yep. Okay. Apply some pressure. Push it down. Let's see if this is hooked in. You there? Yeah. Let's hold. Let's see. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Looks like it's pretty good. Yep. So the main function of that, to be honest, is really just to keep it from flapping back and forth, which is not really going to do. Um, so if for some reason you break a tab or you can't, the factory push-ins were kind of a pain to get off. I ended up breaking all of them off, to be honest with you. So if you can get some replacements, that'd be perfect. Uh, but I know what the reading from some of the forums is some people just ran it just like that. But we try to get it to where it's as close to factory as possible. Yeah, and we so. may come up with a little bit bigger rig job than that piece, but for now, that looks like it's going to work. And the good thing is the whole thing is the whole back panel is held from the top down where they hook right. over, so it's not going to fall off. And it's got a decent amount of pressure on it, too. Exactly. So here we go. So now we're going to bolt this back onto the top. We're going to need, we'll need to feed our wires through here, and then we'll bolt these on. So there's a little pocket on the back here of the cover that these will come down through. Feed these through. It's a whole lot easier to feed these with it apart. So even if you're just replacing your bottom cover, we'll drop the top off so you can you can yeah. feed these all through and when they're up underneath. To unbolt the, the top, it's only four uh, 14 millimeter bolts, so it's not too bad. All right. Let's Got it. 
looks pretty good. Let me make sure this rubber piece is on the inside as well. There. Okay. There, you go. there she goes. All right. Always kind of start off real slow. The last thing you're going to do is cross thread these bolts. Um, if you're doing it by hand, you will probably won't have that problem. But if you're using a bill, just kind of ease into it. Don't over tighten them and don't go ahead and tighten all of them until you get all of them in. Yeah, get all four of the bolts. And that way you still have there. enough room to line everything up. So now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and make a little cutout right here on the carpet piece. And essentially what it does is keeps the carpet from uh, coming untucked from this plastic panel. There's a little metal spike coming up on the part of the top frame. Just cut you a little vertical slit in that and it'll, it'll just kind of loop over it. Kind of cover up the frame. Yeah, what we do is just fold over there and cut. There'll usually be a little mark on there, just kind of a guideline, but go ahead and definitely line it up on your on your cover to make sure that, you know, the line's in the, in the perfect spot. This one was actually looking pretty good. Right there. Okay. 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 All right. So now we put back our plastic panels here on the side. And there it goes. All right. There she goes. Go on. Yep. All right, perfect. Before I put all the side panels on here, we're going to hook this back flap up underneath. So we'll lay this piece back. Let's lay this stuff on. Yeah. yeah. So on the underneath side, okay. oh, we've seen it a couple different ways. We've seen it where this big back carpet flap will uh, it'll come. I've seen it before they've got this uh, horizontal slit in the, in the carpet. You know, coming a loop around one of these springs. Um, you can either cut a slit in there. But we've got hog rings anyway because the cover hog rings on. So we're just gonna hog ring the uh, carpet up onto the onto these metal bars there. So we'll cut a couple of rings and hook them on. This the official hog ring salsa bowl. Let's uh, we can do the wires. The wire? okay. Yeah. Initially, we cut well, the uh, the little zip ties that we're holding on to. These. Yeah, a lot of these have little Christmas tree tab deals that are that wrap around here, then push into a spot in the frame. A lot of those are hard to get off without being able to pinch the other side of the of the. This is our real Christmas tree tab. It's got a little two of the little flanges that kick out, so it's hard to really pinch to get those off without pinching on the inside. It's hard to get to the inside of them. A lot of those break off when we pull them apart. You can run some zip ties to hold the wire up under the frame. Luckily, there's a lot of places you can anchor to. Yeah. Right on the spring, you can just zip tie those so they're not just dangling down on the floor. There we go. I've got both of those hooked up in there. There we go. Get the snips right quick. All right, so now we got our wires fed through. Let's go ahead and start making our connections. So um, we'll hook the yellow one here up. Luckily, a lot of these connections are very unique, so you can't accidentally hook one to another, especially that one right there. Yellow is always going to mark your airbags. Okay, this is from the front of the cover okay. for the heater, so this one's going to plug here. And while Brian's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and clean up this headrest and get it ready. All right, this connection's going to connect there. This little guy's going to snake up here hook into this green connector, which is 
is our seat heater. This has got a little push tab and hook in the frame here. Okay. That's there. That's there. Alright, cool. So those are our power connections. We got two, there'll be two extra power connections hanging over. They come to the outside, that's where our control panel is. So these two on the side here you go to our, our plastic panel on the side. So everything looks buttoned up underneath. And we'll go ahead and grab the panel now. There we go. Okay. Not like that. Okay, so this has your little push there pinch tab there and then it wraps around the screws on the yep. front so let's go ahead and hook and make sure we our do our two connections uh, zip. Golly, there we go there we goes Okay, so your little cloth piece, carpet piece on the side, there's a metal bar underneath it right here. There's, bl there's a black metal bar in here. And the inside of this uh, side panel has a little catch that's gonna wrap around and clip onto that bar. So make sure that this cloth piece is tucked in behind that bar. So when you're putting the panel up there, it, the bar's exposed for it to clip onto. So we'll go ahead and line this guy up here. Let's see here, that's clear. Pops there. It should pop there. Yep. Okay. Got it. And then there's another. Let's see this. Okay. And there's a catch here. This piece here uh, kind of claws over, and there's another metal tab, metal uh, bar here. It's going to go over the top of it. So we're going to just actually push in. So let's hook that center first. Well, actually, let's get the back, and then we'll we can push over for that tab. Yeah. Tap that in again. And then try to lift up. There, there it goes. There we go. Okay. And then we'll do our, our Phillips at the very end again. It's popped in. That's good. We can look and see. We should be able to see up underneath and make sure this tab is on over the top of that bar. Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay. All right. Front so panel. now the front panel. There we get this piece will push this all the way to the top so that yeah. slides in there. I'll let you do that. And then it's got a clip in and then it bolts on. That snaps in and then there's a screw on the far On the sides and then there. two underneath. And and that will do it. Let me see if I can find four to back and right there. There? Yep. Okay. Back. It's gonna be a couple. Tuck that carpet piece underneath too. All right. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then the last two ones. Two screws there. These are all just Phillips screws. That. Awesome. All right, so last thing we're going to get to is the headrest, cutting the holes for the headrest. So there's the two posts here that we're going to put these in last. So we'll be able to, we'll throw this on the ground, it's going to be easier to feel where the holes are. So we'll trim a little hole on the top and then we'll push these through and then they'll self clip back into place. So we'll throw this on the ground up front yeah. there. A pair of scissors. Here they are. Facing like that, or yeah, facing that was fun. Okay, there we go. All right. okay, let's see here. so on the top, you'll be able to feel through the top of the cover where the little post holes are as your, your finger will sink down into it. I kind of get an idea. I'm gonna get my little pin, I'm gonna 
I can tell that's about the middle there. We'll mark a little dot. And then same over here. Right in the middle of that. We'll mark a little spot. Always grab your headrest and just line it up. And make sure those look like they're the right width apart. So, they, yeah, they're right. I was feeling the right hole. You want to start in the very center of it. You want to cut a real small hole. You can always cut a little more, but you can't add it back on. So, what I'd take your scissors, but close them and put it right in the center. Because if you leave it open and you try to poke through, once it breaks through, then this blade's very prone to just cutting a slit across the leather, which I've done many times. So, either just, I usually just put them both together for the point. There, and I'll just kind of tap the back of the scissors, get a little hole. That way, I got a little starting point. Then I'll come through and I'll just cut small little hole we'll get a small little window and then we'll double check our location and everything again so on the underneath side of the material there's gonna be some foam backing so we'll try to kind of pull the foam through if I can get my fingers on it there and cut a little bit more And guys, being at the end of the install, just remember, take your time. I realize sometimes it might take a little bit more time than, than you'd like, but the last thing you're going to do is mess up at the very end. So just kind of take your time cutting. Like Brian said, you can't add material on there, but you can cut off as, okay, as you need it. We can see our this hole right there. You can see the metal framework around it. So we know we're pretty good. We're going to look at our headrest post again. So we see we got a pretty good room for margin of error. You can see how much bigger space that, that is to cover up. So... Still probably need to go a little bit, trim a little bit more out. Let's see. Let's see if that will work. Boom, 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 boom. This pin goes out. There we go. There's some grooves on the back of this. So there's this groove in here. Negative there. The other side doesn't have it. Just has this little vertical stud there. So these two pieces face back, and these are the pieces that kick out and lock it into these little things that pinch. So when you, this goes in, they'll lock into place. So as long as that clears, that looks good. It should push down. Then it'll lock into place. There we go. Perfect. Boom. Now we'll do our next one. That's there. We'll start right in the middle where our little dot was. Poke a little hole there. Tap a tap a tap. And we'll start trimming a hole. this is easier with scissors than a razor blade especially if you have a fresh razor blade you push it down it can really just slice right through and slice a whole lot further than you want to than you really wanted to I learned that the hard way and I started just using scissors for this part of it okay now this particular seat this is the driver seat the um, button to push for the headrest peg this part this side didn't have a button to push it in this side faces the driver door so we'll stick that in there, lock that in place. Our headrest will slide right on there. There's our button. Boom. Now we got our adjustability. Perfect. Yeah. That's it. Pull us back up on the bench. All right, guys, and that concludes the install. Uh, came out pre looking pretty good. Our quartz is going to be the quartz 2005 to 2008 uh, Acura TL, tops and bottoms. So the, both seats are pretty similar to one another. The install is going to be basically identical. Um, you so see, there's they get five and six, and then seven and eight are the two they kind of group together. But uh, this is pretty much the same install for, for all the models for five to eight for the Acura TL. If you got any questions, feel free to give us a call anytime at 214 710 2565 or check us out on our website www.theseatshop.com. Uh, also, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, appreciate it, guys. Y'all have a good one. Thanks.